Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. It's good to see you. As you can see, Art and I are with our favorite love coach and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, good to see you again. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks. Hey, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What about you? Oh, I'm pretty good. Um, I'm uh, sometimes emotionally fragile, as you know. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, you talk about emotions, uh, both uh, uh, intimate and uh, physical and otherwise. Uh, and I was hoping that you would help me discuss my emotional fragility or lack of it, depending on the day. Uh, and help me Mm -hmm. understand myself a little better. Absolutely, yeah. I I really appreciate you you bringing this up. I can't tell if you're for real or not, but it's all good. It's lovely. So yeah, I I wanna, I mean, I think, you know, we think of the the word intimacy and um, I like to sort of frame it as emotional intimacy because it's really about into me, you see. So basically I'm revealing about myself, what's going on in here, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm noticing, and I'm sharing it with you. And it can be vulnerable to do that. And yet when we do that, we end up feeling connected to that person. We end up like, get a sense of them, get a feel for who they are and what's what they're going through. And so it, it really helps build trust with another person and you know, with our partners, obviously that's what we're talking about here, but it, it's true in other relationships as well. So you know, what are we feeling about something? And, and, you know, what do we dream about? Or what regrets do we have? So it's really taking time to be, to share what's going on and to, and to be willing to receive the other person's truths, whatever they might be, even if they might be like, you know, we, we don't want to react and like, what? You feel that way? Or, or why would you want that? Or, you know, we don't want to, we want to receive it with just sort of the preciousness of something tender that someone's revealing. You know, Michelle, I, I think um, the idea of emotional intimacy is really what bonding is all about. You bond to bond. If you know somebody deeply, you can bond with them. Um, if you don't know them deeply, you can be friends. Mm. You know, you can appreciate them on a number of levels. But if you don't really bond with them, then particularly in a relationship, what's the point? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, hopefully we see our relationships as or our intimate relationship as, you know, a companion with us and someone who we can just be ourselves with and reveal things about ourselves that, you know, maybe we don't like or maybe we're not that proud of or, you know, maybe there's some, you know, we all have different things from our past that were painful and they were difficult and those things still impact us and, and we get triggered by things in the present around that. But if we're able to to, to share the more tender parts of ourselves, we're less likely to be reactive and show up in anger in response, and we're more likely to show up with vulnerability. It's kind of interesting I have that um, uh, the way I, I see interaction of, of many people and uh, using an emotional connectedness is one in which some people trigger other people uh, in a negative way. And that's the way I see, I, I see it happening amongst people uh, all the time. And uh, 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 that, that's sort of like a negative part of it. But I assume that, that that moves down to the couple level, the relationship level mm. as well. And uh, uh, it would seem that uh, revealing emotions oftentimes uh, is something that people are worried about being triggered it or having it used against them so how do, how do they develop that comfort level uh to reveal yeah. some of those intimate feelings that's you hit it exactly i mean basically a lot of us have experiences you know growing up in our family of origin or you know bullied on the playground whatever that to be yourself or to reveal what's going on is you know, can be, you can be open yourself up to being teased or, you know, criticized or whatever. And so it can be very uh, painful to reveal things in a situation where you don't feel safe. So it's really about how do we, we have to kind of create that safety 
for our partner and help them, you know, welcome whatever it is that's going on. Wow, I'm really angry at you. Oh, well, thanks. You know, I, that's a little hard to hear, but, you know, tell me more about that. What's going on for you? Like to really be curious, like when somebody is re willing to reveal something, you know, like a, some, you know, negative emotion or something that's tender for them, they're trusting us with something that's really deep inside them. And to me, that always is like, wow, they trusting me. I'm welcoming that. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I don't know. If, I think that's one of the things I, I help clients with because I think sometimes we, why would you feel that way? Or why are you so angry about this? It's like the why questions aren't helpful because <laughs> they just end up sounding like they're in judgment. But the curious, like, oh, that's so interesting. Wow. And, you know, we might have some reaction to that, but also, could you tell me more about that? I'd really love to know more about that. You know, I have a, a friend, I'll call him, uh, a kind of a distant friend. And he is one of those classic male stereotypes. He's emotionally distant. Um, he uh, really never uh, shares anything that he cares about. It's, it's a lot of short answers to any interesting, deep questions. Um, just doesn't like to get personal. And he's been through three marriages. <laughs> mm. And I, I have a hunch that all three of his wives um, couldn't deal with that emotional distance. You know, they might have loved each other, and he, but he just can't express it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great, yeah, that's a great observation. I think part of it, too, is that, you know, intimacy is not just between, you know, me and you, but also within myself. Do I even know what I'm feeling and thinking? Sometimes, you know, I don't, a person might not even have access to that, or it's a very, it's a, it's a vague feeling and they don't know how to express it. Because, I mean, let's face it, you know, men in our culture are not exactly encouraged to share their emotions, right? A lot of men are made, fun, boys are made fun of, to, you know, why are you crying and don't be that way and be a man. And so it's like, basically, you know, we, we've been stuffing down men's emotions. I'm speaking generally, obviously, but stuffing down men's emotions. And then when we're, you know, romantic partners, oh, share more about your personal, you know, experiences. And it's like, well, you just men and trained <laughs> to not do that. And so we need to, if, if that's the situation, we, you know, it's important to share, wow, I, I just want to know a little more about what's going on for you. Do you have anything that, you know, or even like you might see a movie together and there might be a character that you really relate to. And what is it about the character that lightens, lights you up or that you admire or something, you know, just there's always little clues and things that we enjoy and things that light us up. And that's a way for a person, you know, if this friend of yours, for example, if he wanted to get more in touch with himself or more able to share, would be able to get notice those little uh, stirrings of something that like, wow, this was really upsetting to me. How can I get curious about that? Or, wow, my biggest moment of glory was this. And, and what does that say about me? And so it's kind of like we can look for evidence of what these little uh, noticings are about our own uniqueness and kind of enjoy that discovery process and enjoy sharing that with a partner. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, we've uh, done about uh, a dozen or more episodes with you and uh, we absolutely love you and, and your warmth and caring shows through. Uh, this is the first time that I actually uh, saw you, almost could see you in a setting, uh, whether it be on Zoom or Skype or uh, in, in person, where you're sitting with a couple and helping them have a conversation about mm. some very um, uh, touchy uh, issues for them, where I can actually see you in that role uh, mm. uh, and sort of like you are joining their circle, okay, and making them feel free and comfortable to talk. So I guess that's that's part of uh, your the way you operate, I assume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, thank you for that feedback. I think we sometimes are talking about things. And so uh, this topic in particular, obviously, is, is, you know, intimacy and sharing around that way. But I think it, it kind of the gentleness to bring that kind of, well, one of the things they talk about in counseling is, you know, unconditional positive regard. It's like that I feel like I, I have that for people. And I love welcoming 
them out and helping them welcome themselves out into what's true for them. Because all this, this is like our instrumentation, like, you know, think of a plane flying without visuals or whatever. It's like, this is the onboard instrumentation that helps guide our life that what, who are we drawn to and the activities we love to do and the work we love or whatever. This is all part of our uniqueness. And if we're not able to listen to what's going on inside, we don't have access to kind of orient ourselves in, in creating a, a rich and rewarding life for ourselves. So it really can be um, painful to not be able to know uh, what's going on inside. Well, John, uh, I, I, I'd like to uh, offer uh, to, to your friend, and uh, uh, if he's still alive and uh, still with us, and, and to any other distant male uh, out there, uh, that you should go to YouTube and look up uh, for the video of Rosie Greer singing, It's All Right to Cry. Mm. <laughs> and maybe that will help him with a breakthrough, perhaps. Uh, I've always enjoyed that. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I've enjoyed that. Uh, oh, I've well, always Michelle, enjoyed that been, song. Th th Michelle, this mm. has been a great conversation, as always. And uh, I, I love your practical approach to things. You know, the, really good advice that people can grab onto and give it a try. No, nobody's got yeah, the absolutely. perfect answer. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, it's kind of, it's a process, right? It's not like we just suddenly have that access. I, I feel like earlier in my life, I wasn't able to really know what was going on through what I was feeling or thinking. It was just kind of, there was a lot of, like, I could think things, but I didn't have access to my emotions. And it's not uncommon for us to kind of have to do like an excavation process to, to be listening in. And um, it, it can be a really beautiful discovery to find out more about oneself. And, and, and then, like I said, how to orient and choose life choice, make ch life choices, basically. Sure. And that's, of course, that's what a love and relationship coach can help you with. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.